Stand By Me on 650 AM WSM. From Thank Gospel you, Wild Grace. Bill. And let me tell you something. Here is a guy who, since our friendship began, has always stood by me and my colleague Eddie Stubbs and this radio station. I love this radio station. I you know, know you I do. do. It's great to be on the Air Castle of the South. <laughs> And gospel great stand by me. I told you off the air, and I, I didn't know. I started doing a little research after I, I heard it, thinking it had never crossed my mind other than being a love song, uh, a man to a woman, a woman to a man, about yeah. how yeah, as long as you're with me, everything's going to be all right. Yeah. And then as soon as you were singing it and you said Jesus, I went, well, of course, it, it could it works in, in, interpreted that way. And, I've known you so long while bill cody i know it and, and Lieber it, and stoller that's a Lieber and stoller song yeah and, and sure Benny is. king had the original on it yeah 1961 man i saw benny king at the royal peacock in atlanta georgia and at that time he had a real big record out called i who have nothing yeah and I i've s- heard that i know that song yeah and i said man tell me about that how did it happen he cut it at Atlantic Studios in New York, and uh, I thought he was going to give me some insight. He said, well, we found the song, and I cut it. <laughs> and that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on Ronnie Millsap's Gospel Grace. Oh, here it is. There it is, Charles. Good job. I, <laughs> I who am no one, what? adore him. And want you so I'm just a no one With nothing to give you but love I love Yeah, there you go Boy, that's it We found it and we cut it <laughs> That's what he said I said, well, t- uh, who wrote it? He said, I don't know <laughs> you said you heard us earlier this morning playing Chuck Jackson's Yeah Any Day Now, your version, yeah. great hit song Yeah, and I love that I was at Myrtle Beach and a guy came down and said Chuck Jackson wants his money <laughs> I said, what? He said, Chuck Jackson said he wants his money I said, he didn't write that song Burt Bacharach wrote that song He said, well, he still wants his money <laughs> Because, you know, no doubt, I I was influenced by Chuck Jackson. I was on Scepter and uh, used to hang out with Chuck Jackson quite a bit. And really an interesting man and uh, had a big influence on me. I was going to ask, when you talk about Gospel Greats as the title of the album, that Southern Gospel music, and and, uh, so much of, of the gospel stuff has its roots in and the black churches of the South, and where they do business a little differently, certainly regarding music, than than the churches across town. You know, at Brother Calvin's church, we <laughs> knew where we could get the goods when it came to the gospel greats when I was a kid growing up. But, you know, all of us grew up singing in church mm-hmm. somehow. I, I mean, I did. I remember singing in church, and uh, I knew the songs that would make them stand up Wild Bill, they'd make them shout. <laughs> Sometimes they'd even roll in the aisles. <laughs> That's a primitive, Meta Branch, primitive Baptist church. Now, you take that music from the church, but it's that same sort of groove that's made its way into R&B during the same time period you're talking about you, with Benny King in the 60s. Right? You bet. You yeah. bet. It's the same thing. It's the same soul. Those artists were a big influence as well, in addition to what you grew up with in church. Who were those people for you in the early days? Oh, goodness. Well, big one, Ray Charles, of course. He had a big influence. I was in school in Raleigh. They taught me Braille at 6 and violin at 7, piano at 8. I graduated, and I said, I want to be a professional musician. And they said, no, we're not going to let you do that. And... So I heard about a Ray Charles concert in Atlanta, and I went down there. His pilot let me into the dressing room. I was sitting there playing Ray's piano when he walks in. I said, Mr. Ray Charles, you are the high priest. Man, you are the man. I want to be a professional musician like you. And he said, well, play me something. So I played him a couple of songs, and 
He said, you know, son, what you need to do, you need to become a professional musician. I went back to Riley and I said, Ray Charles. He says, it's okay if I become a professional musician. And he said, well, we don't want you to do that. Why don't you become a lawyer or a teacher? But I, I love music so much, I took Ray's advice and uh, brought it all the way to Nashville. Where was your first professional gig after that moment in time when Ray Charles gives that advice? And you I, 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 w- I had a record that was uh, a top five soul record called Never Had It So Good. Oh, yeah. That was written by Ashford and Simpson. I cut it in New York. And the first gig I played was the Howard Theater in Washington, D.C. with uh, Howard University. Oh, yeah. And uh, they had a theater there. And the back side of that record, Ray Charles said, I love that record you got out. Never had it so good. He said, but what I really like is that B-side, a song called Let's Go Get Stoned. (laughs) And he said, I love that so much. Matter of fact, I'm going to cut that. (laughs) What time period is this, Ronnie? 1965. Oh, wow. Yeah. Let's go get stoned. That's it. Let's go get stoned. <laughs> and, you know, what we thought, Bill, I'd had a, a hit, and I thought we could flip it and maybe have another hit. Mm-hmm. Ray Charles stopped that. <laughs> <laughs> when Ray Charles says, I'm going to cut your song, cut that's your the end song. of your song as far yeah, as a single, it, right? That's it. That's <laughs> it. But that's kind of funny because you know how many times have I sung Ray Charles songs, but when did he ever sing one of my songs? Well, he sure did, and he cut it and knocked me out of another number one record. Were you in his exhibit? Did you participate in the exhibit, the Ray Charles exhibit at the Country Music Hall of Fame when it was up? Yeah, yeah. I I thought you did. Yeah. (laughs) This is Ronnie Millsap. If you just joined us on 6.50 a.m. WSM, WSMonline.com, the app download to your smartphone. If you're watching on Heartland Television across the country, you see Ronnie in studio here in the Magnolia Lobby of the Gaylord Opryland Resort and Convention Center on Coffee Country and Cody. And, Ronnie, if they're back home in um, Kinston, Jacksonville, Wilmington, all markets that have Heartland Television. Oh, I love that. Over in North Carolina. Over in North Carolina, the homeland. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Robbinsville, is that where you were born? Yes, sir. Now, where do we find Robbinsville, and how big is it? It's small. It's in uh, Graham County, which is, uh, you know, right up in uh, northwestern North Carolina, uh-huh. right up against uh, Tennessee, over not too far from Maryville. Of course, when I was a So kid. the Great Smoky Mountains run through there. Yeah, country. yeah. But they called it Merville. Merville, they still do. (laughs) Yeah, they do, don't they? And the greats that came out of that little town, speaking of that part of the country. Jack Green. Roy Acuff. Yeah. Carl Smith. Wow. uh, Kenny Chesney. Con Hunley. I know I'm leaving somebody out. Well, you know you're small if your population is smaller than the area code. The area code is 828. The population is 608. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there you go, and Charlie. A sign that comes in town that says, Ronnie right. Millsaps from here. I'm glad you got him here, Bill. <laughs> There's a Country Music Hall of Fame performance for you from Ronnie Millsap this morning on 6.50 a.m. WSM, WSMonline.com, the smartphone app download, and, of course, Heartland Television across the country over in Ronnie's homeland in North Carolina. People can watch us this morning on Heartland. Man, you got all of that, didn't you? Well, you know, I get to hearing those, and I forget how much fun it was in the studio making records. I still love that so much, Bill. As my old preacher daddy would say, he beat the keys off of that thing. <laughs> yes, sir. We have to... Swing down, sweet chariot, or swing low. Sometimes you see it written as swing low, sweet chariot. Yeah, I've heard that too. That one goes back. 
What is the origin of that song? You have any idea? I, public domain by now, I would. I'm think, sure it? it must be. Must yeah. be. Elvis did it famously, kind of in that same. Yeah. Yeah. Same tempo, up tempo with. Uh, who would have been singing with him on that stuff? Charlie, you're the Elvis guy. Would it have been? The, it probably would have been J.D. Sumner and the Stamps. Would it I have think. Been, even been, back yeah. then. Okay. I think so. yeah. Okay. Right. Don't be wrong. And, uh, did you grow up with quartet music? We talked about influence. I did. Yeah. The Blackwood Brothers, real big. You remember Sunday morning uh, gospel jubilee on Sunday morning? I've heard that. It yeah. Was the Florida Boys and the Happy Goodman family. Oh yeah. The Blackwood Brothers and Hovey Lister and all those guys. And the Statesman, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's great. Those quartets. Boy, good stuff. Well, boy, they. So who are the people on your record who are singing that great harmony and that keeping that? You know, I back? call on one person. Bergen White. Oh, yeah. And he he has done so many great orchestrations for me on records. I mean, he'd go in and do strings and background parts and all of that, you know. And you could say, you know, I need I need a change right here at this and this start of this chorus. I need something else to happen. He'd go out there and write it right there on the session. Not many people can do that. I and mean, he would, the musicians are sitting there and he's rewriting the chart right there. And it works. And I said, Bergen, can you get together a group of people and uh, kind of act like the Jordanaires or the Stamps? Or, he said, yeah, I can do that. And he did. <laughs> Bergen's been a guest on the show. He was featured, he was been. it, the uh, Nashville Cats series, I, I believe Charlie? so, with Bill Lloyd at the Country Music Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. he came by to visit. With He's him. a sweet one, man. He's a good He's guy. He's a modest fellow. Mm-hmm. I know he is. I mean, you, you would have no idea if you just ran into him having coffee somewhere one morning. that he. You would don't know what's running through his head, man. <laughs> That's right. I'm telling you, it's all good. Uh, talk about bringing it home, by the way. Uh, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. The earliest known version of that song from 1909 by the Fisk Jubilee Singers of really? Fisk University. Really? How about Nashville. that, Charlie? How about that? <laughs> and my what do they man. share in common? <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. Wow. Good. They both have stars in the Music City Walk of Fame. There you go. Fisk <laughs> Jubilee Singers <laughs> and Ronnie Mills. Yeah. Who'd be the host of that ceremony? Uh, me yeah <laughs> I, uh, yeah man I, and that line in there where he said he, he wasn't so particular about the chariot he just wanted to see how a chariot feels that's it <laughs> that's right <laughs> ronnie Millsap in studio with us this morning country music hall of famer and uh the memphis years we're gonna do that on the other side and play a very famous song that ronnie played on from elvis we'll do that after this hand for the preacher man who asks where you found on such a cold dark afternoon Elvis with Ronnie Millsap playing keys. On Boy, that was AM. fun. That I was fun. Know it had to and be. Millsap, he said, Millsap, more thunder on the piano. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's what he said. More thunder. You talked about the, the Memphis years off air a moment ago, and you said, I mean, who, growing up with your background and your story, winds up sitting in the studio talking to Elvis Presley and arranging a song like Kentucky? I mean, how would you ever think that dream would come true? Well, how did it come true? How did you make it to Memphis? How did you wind up with Elvis? And Eddie Rabbit, of course, he and Dick Hurd co-wrote They it. wrote that, yeah. Well, Joycey and I, we moved out of Atlanta to Memphis. I was playing down at the Playboy Club in Atlanta. And Chips Moman came down there, and he's a big producer. And he said, I want you to move to Memphis. I said, why? He said, I'll get you play on a bunch of sessions. And I'll f- I said, well, I need to work somewhere. I need to provide for my family. And he said, well, we'll find you a place to work. So we moved to Memphis, and uh, we were homesick for Atlanta so much. That was a tough move. And uh, we found a great place to live. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm in the studio, and... Uh, getting used to what they do in the studio it was a four track at that time they had a four track and we're working and they said felton jarvis is coming down to Memphis to memphis with elvis and he and chip smoma are going to produce this uh, new stuff on elvis the some of the stuff that uh, is going to make him uh, more vibrant and more uh, vital 
today. And so they, they had this song, Kentucky Rain. And I got to play on that. And I got to talk with Elvis. And he said, you know, I appreciate you singing those high notes there for me. <laughs> I said, well, it, it was a whole lot of fun. I got to play some New Year's Eve parties for him. And uh, he said, uh, I said, Elvis, I, I hate to ask you this, but I know all your songs. Would you come up and sing one tonight? <laughs> he laughed and said, no, not to, I'm just sitting here having fun tonight. <laughs> he didn't want to go up and sing. And I said, well, that's fine. I just want you to know if you wanted to do Treat Me Nice or Loving You, I know them all. <laughs> I got you covered on keys. That's it. Over here on the piano. That's it. So what were sessions with Elvis like? Was he difficult in the studio? Was he a taskmaster? Or was no. He, no. he was, uh, you could tell he'd been doing that a long time, and he was really good at it. I mean, he had that so much experience in the studio. I was shocked that they were recording in Memphis because he was always recording at Studio B here in Nashville. But all that stuff in Memphis turned out really good. And what was the studio there? American? Amer American Studios, yeah. yeah. With Chip Smoman owned it. And uh, then Mark James was living right next door to me and Joycey. We lived in a, a duplex uh -huh. in, in Memphis. Mark James is right next door to us. And you might explain who Mark James is. Mark He's in the James. Songwriters Hall He's of Fame. He's a songwriter extraordinaire, mm -hmm. and he was living next door, and all of a sudden I hear this big song by B.J. Thomas called Hooked on a Feeling. <laughs> and uh, Reggie Young is playing all that guitar work that sounds like a sitar. But, I mean, what a great record. Then all of a sudden here comes Mark James with Suspicious Minds. Yeah, man. Elvis cuts that. A huge record. Now, and I got to live right next door to Mark James. I always thought if I could have spent some time in the studio with Mark, I could have had a hit down in Memphis. Mm -hmm. But it it didn't happen, you know. And it, so was Chips responsible for obviously for the move? You told the story from Atlanta to Memphis for yeah. for the move from Memphis to Nashville in what seventy two when you came to yeah. To Nashville, uh, I stumbled into that. I was playing in, uh, what, like uh, November of 72, I was playing at a place down here called The Villa. Uh -huh. And uh, this guy walked in and he said, I want to talk to you. And I said, yeah. He said, my name is Don Davis, and I'm the manager of the King of the Road Hotel. Oh. Okay. And I said, yeah, I know that. He said, there's a showroom on the ninth floor. And I played it. I said, yeah. He said, I want you to start playing the showroom at the King of the Road. And the one thing I didn't have is a job. I was moving to Nashville, and all of a sudden I got a job. He said, what do you make? And I told him, and he said, I'll double it. And he said, how many nights do you play? I said, six. He said, you only play five for me. And I'm thinking, man, this is really a good way to come to Nashville. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the King of the Road playing all those great shows. And I run into Roger Miller. <laughs> it was Roger Miller's King of the Road Hotel. And... A lady had been in the gift shop uh, buying a bunch of Roger Miller records and uh, souvenirs and that kind of stuff. She came up and said, Mr. Miller, I love that dang me. I love that chug a -lug. I love that do whack a do whack a do whack a and a Kansas City star. That's what I are. You ought to see my car. And Roger said, Lady, would you bite my ass? <laughs> I said, Roger, you can't say that. <laughs> and she threw all her stuff on the floor and said, I'll never buy it. Either. So I said, you can't treat the fans like that, man. <laughs> At the oh, King of the Road Hotel. So, so good. That is 
the great Ronnie Millsap, Country Music Hall of Fame storyteller, as well as Country Music Hall of Fame performer on Coffee Country and Cody. I knew it was going to have a happy ending with Roger Miller involved. I just knew it was. Oh, so, he, he was sweet, man. He was probably the quickest guy I'd ever been around. And I <laughs> spent an afternoon with Jimmy Webb uh, one time and him telling stories about how he got certain songs recorded. All he wanted to know to know is you know anything about Roger Miller <laughs> and this is the guy who wrote all the great Glenn Campbell hits that you yeah know. Wichita uh, lineman and yeah, by the time I get to Phoenix yeah the one I wanted to know was MacArthur Park yeah <laughs> lots of people from Richard Harris to Donna Summer Waylon Jennings yeah in between there you go that's that, right cut that stuff wow well, Ronnie Millsap, much too quickly our time has come. It is gone. But thank you so much for visiting with us. Oh, what an honor to be with you, Wild Bill and Charlie. Thank you guys so much. I listen to you all the time, and it's amazing what you do here in the early morning hours on WSM. And you know how much I love WSM. I've been listening that. to this station all my life. You appear very well rested this morning. I imagine you have a nice pillow at home. I do. I have a my pillow at home. Wait a I minute. <laughs> you mean the Charlie Maddox endorsed yeah, my pillow? <laughs> the same one. Yes, I do. I couldn't resist. I am an only child. It was at one heart. of two things. I'm not sure which right now. I'm okay. thinking about what Roger Miller would say. Um, <laughs> it's either really smooth or really cheesy. I'm not sure. Which. A, a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's really good. And with God. Gospel Greats, his brand new work. You're watching on Heartland Television across the country and listening to us around the world at 6.50 a.m. WSM and WSMonline.com. Divine intervention, really from the moment you were born, when I read your story, your life, the way it's been chronicled at the Country Music Hall of Fame and other places, it's just truly divine what has happened. And I thought we closed with a, another great work off that a lot of people would associate, talking about great names in the history of this town, Ronnie, and one you would have grown up with. The old redhead from Berea, Red Foley. Oh, Red Foley from 1950. Yeah. He did this song originally and famously, but you are going to love it from Ronnie Millsap's new work, Gospel Greats. God bless you, and hug Joycey when you get I home. Will, I will, and she her. has been totally the inspiration of my life. She's orchestrated everything that's happened in Nashville, and it's a tremendous debt. And I try, try to keep paying that back every day. Joycey, we love you. We're thinking about you this morning. There you go. As Ronnie Millsap closes with Peace in the Valley on 650 AM WSM. The Legend, 650 AM WSM. Hi, this is Bill Cody from 650 AM WSM. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. If you like what you've seen, click the button below.